Hello and welcome to the Red V TV preview show supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2019 season uh, as we look ahead to the final regular round of Super League uh, over at Hull FC um, at the KC Stadium. I'm joined by Kev. Kev, who uh, I think you've got a little statement to make. You, there's been some rumours that you've been banished uh, by us on Red VTV. Yeah, a couple of people coming up to me the last couple of games at home saying, I've not seen you on Red VTV for a while. Is it because you was, insert any other word for drunk, yep. <laughs> uh, at Wembley following the, uh, the trip to the capital? Um, yeah, I was significantly inebriated <laughs> following the uh, travesty of Wembley, but... No, I wasn't banned because I didn't swear, unlike other <laughs> Red View TV uh, guests. Yeah. Um, didn't swear, and here I am helping Kev out. And it's the Kev Dream team. It is the Kev Dream team. Looking forward to this day. Um, so, main news that's come out this week is the um, almost open secret that Christian Wolf is our new coach. Um, he's leaving the Newcastle Knights for us and joining on the 1st of November. Two year deal with another year option so, yeah. um, at the end of it. Are you excited by that appointment? Finally going to be the year of the wolf, isn't it? Well, yes, indeed it will. Yeah, I am. I am now that it's been confirmed that he is going to, or has been relieved of, uh, his time of duties. Yeah. Because I don't think that would work as we probably want it to. Um, but he's cut from a very similar cloth uh, as Holbrook. Probably doesn't have as much NRL pedigree as Holbrook does in terms of the assistant stuff. He's only been at night for just over a year, isn't it? Um, he's been, has he been at the Broncos as well, I think, for uh, a short time? Yeah, he's done something at one of the grades yeah. below. I think he was head coach at, coach at the grade below. But his success at the World Cup speaks speaks for itself. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. He's got to have it. I think the, the rumours this week are he's got a fantastic relationship with all of his Tonga national players. He builds good relationships with his with his players well, at nights. That, that's it. I, I don't didn't know too much about him, to be honest. Um, I've read up a little bit that he's he's taken, as you say, the age grade teams of, of the Cowboys, yeah. the Broncos, yeah. and that up to grand finals. Yeah. I mean, he's not had a great record in them, but you've got to get to them grand finals Absolutely. to to be considered one of the you best. Know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you, you mentioned the Tonga gig. In five years, he's taken Tonga from 14th to 4th yeah. in the world. He was within a whisker of beating England. They've beaten New Zealand. He's kind of taken some of the the New Zealand players, Aussie players and whatever, and taken them back representing Tonga yeah. as well. Yes. That's got to be a good sign. And it looks like we're going down the same path of, of kind of appointing someone who's done the levels up through and the next step before getting a full-time NRL job, whether we like it or not, is to come over here and coach over here and success. be a success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My only slight concern when it was announced, I, I, we kind of all knew, obviously the mall on, if you follow the mall on Twitter, he knows everything before the, the people themselves, even though it seems, doesn't it? Um, is, is this two year with an option? I don't know how much that's him, how much that's us. It's, it, you read it as if it's McManus keeping us on the, the bargaining side. The last two seasons we've had two real disruptions, Barber last year, Holbrook this year. Has it had an impact? For me it possibly has. We've got a year at least next year where there's going to be none of that disruption, unless you all the rumours so, yeah. about Luke Thompson yeah. into NRL surface, which they probably will, um, and he deserves that, that shot should it come. Um, but yeah, I... I it's a tricky one because we don't want to be here in 18 months' time having those same conversations about, oh, is he going, is he staying, yeah. is there a job in the NRL? Yeah. It's been a carousel, hasn't it, this last two or three weeks? And it's just unrest, and it can't help the players who are trying to focus on um, focus on achieving the end goals, which is ultimately winning the ground final. Yeah, well, that's it. You'd hope that the club has got a succession uh, kind of plan in place. Now, I've heard the name of Ian Watson being yes. put about and people wanted uh, to see the likes of Ian Watson getting a shot. It might be in two years' time that another young English coach in Richard Marshall is deemed ready yeah. enough yeah. And, and he can take the reins. So you, you do hope the club has got that, that progression. Yeah, there. and I hope that they keep the backroom staff as it is because Paul Wellens is St. Helens through and through um, and, and he knows the DNA of this club inside. He's been here, he's been here that long. Richard, Mar Richard Marshall, sorry, is coming to that fold and, and appears to be doing doing well. So as long as the backroom staff uh, isn't isn't too unsettled, I, I think it can only be a positive thing for the club. Yeah. Right. Looking ahead to 
Friday night, Hull away. Yeah. Squad news. Just one change to the 19-man squad. Um, Joseph Paolo comes in and Danny Richardson drops out. Um, but other than that, it's, it's the exact same. Now, before we, we started recording, you said that the Paolo Bentley kind of choice there yeah. for the, in the 17 is, is probably the big one. It's up to you. We go with the same as last week, full strength, you'd imagine, and you've got the choice of that last bench spot. Do you go Paolo for his experience? Or do you go Bentley for his versatility? I was going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I, I would probably, and this is no offence to Joe Paolo, I'd probably go for Bentley I for agree. his versatility. Yeah. Um, James on Friday night. Yeah, James Roby is getting no younger, so he can he can spell James Roby if needed. He can fill in at left centre. He can do a stint at 13 or second row, in my opinion. I think Joseph Paolo isn't necessarily appreciated that much by the Saints fans because he's not one of these star he's imports. Yeah. He kind of, he's Solid. just a link, isn't he? Is, he? He's yeah. a link between the backs and the forwards. He is. Um, so, yeah, who would you go for? Do you agree? Or? Yeah, I do agree. The, the only thing, my only... We'll get to Hull tomorrow and it'll be 7 o'clock and it'll, be, it'll probably be Paolo because I think Holbrook trusts him because he must see something. Every, everyone I hear or I talk to about Joseph Paolo mentions soft hands. Yeah. He's got these soft yeah, hands. Got, yeah, he has got a good set of hands. And yeah. in a big game, like an upcoming qual- uh, semi final against a team beginning with W here in two weeks' time, is he the man who might just have that double pump soft hands to put someone like Tomo or Zebi or Dompey through a gap that, that gets us on a roll or what? Well, yeah. But then, and again, you talk about Bentley can spot a few different players, but if anything happens to Johnny or QT or T or then you've got it's we're not paid the books yeah. that all the books paid, it's his decision. For me I agree with you. I think I've seen enough of Joseph Paolo this year and I've seen enough of James Bentley relative to that to, to make a, a judgment that for me personally I'd go Bentley. Right. I've been more impressed by his impact. And he's put some size on his yeah, season. Yes, he? yeah, and I think he's he's got a bit of aggression about him. Yeah. Now Going for Paolo, who's come back in, and Richardson's dropped out. If you were Danny Richardson, you've got a year left on your on your contract. You've got a new coach coming in. Do you stick with Saints, or do you twist and kind of sit it out and see if you can get a move somewhere else? It's a tough one. So a friend of mine who did the instant fan at Wembley, Matt, he's from Hull, um, and he's a, a big Danny fan, as is another close friend of mine, Stu. They're very much Danny fans, and I'm not saying I'm not a Danny fan. I think the the six and seven partnership this year we started with is 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 one of the best six and sevens, if not the best in Super League. There's a debate to be had when you've got people like Aaron Smith and Josh Eves coming through the system as to is Tio a ready-made nine and to spell Robes next year, which is probably going to be his last year of significant input mm-hmm. to to the playing squad. Um, and if that's the case do we invest in Danny to, to develop him a little bit more get his kicking game where it needs to be because I've no doubt Sean Long wasn't a world beater at the age Danny Richardson's at and look at the career he went on to have yeah. Lee Breers same some really top top level Super League players who've gone on to do great things in the game so if, if it was my decision and I was in the boardroom I'd be sitting Danny down and saying look we want you at this club and if it, it depends on what on, on what uh, the wolf wants to come in. The wolf, should we refer to him as the wolf? <laughs> the wolf, we can uh, do. What he wants to do. And, and I'm sure he'll have his own ideas. Yep. Um, and I'm sure, like like you said, Robbie's not getting any younger. Um, he, he was brilliant again on, on Friday night. He doesn't look like he's ageing, but he's got to manage his game time. Yeah. And it, it, it's if T.O. would be comfortable with, you're not going to play it. 80 minutes every yeah. week you're going to spell and sole robes and, and that's I mean the big rumour when he signed his contract was it's two years for him then to possibly go on NRL if he wants to play six or seven in the NRL he's not necessarily going to want to be want to play nine in Super League no. is he no. um, so we're playing Hull we've absolutely shell acted them down here we've went 40 points to the good last time we were up there uh, and ended up gifting them a couple of tries to Make it well not respectable, but forty points to twelve. We turned off, didn't we? Yeah, there's been a, there's been a good interview with uh, Adam Pearson in the whole whole live whole Daily Mail, right. I think it is, um, and he said it's a year transition for Hull. Is the chairman? Adam yes, Pearson. he is. So he's got he's saying there's a lot of changes going to be made over uh, the summer, or over the winter. Sorry, with um, players leaving and retiring, and new players coming in. Are you disappointed with Hull this season? Yeah, it's I am and I'm not. I've watched them a couple of times and they've been brilliant, and you think. 
how is this the same group of 13 players what for me there's something going on there at that club that's not quite right yeah. and we've said it at this point of the season for the last three years since they lost the Challenge Cup game here last year they went flat yeah. they're a brilliant cup team and they love that pressure of those kind of games um, I have been disappointed because they sat second three weeks ago and they're now sixth and if tonight Wigan beat Cass sorry yeah. if Cass get a result yeah. they're playing for nothing tomorrow yeah. I almost hope we can do beat Cass, so that whole I've got to turn got, tomorrow because we need yeah. a test. I think so. I called it um, almost like a pre-season game against Huddersfield. I think this is almost a step up in pre-season games yeah. um, to play against Hull. I, I call you you're dead right though. I think Super League needs a strong Hull team, and I want to see a strong Hull team. And yeah, I want to see Saints win Super League every single year. Yeah. But if not, I don't mind if a Hull win it. Um, but yeah, it's. It, you don't hope that they're going to come back stronger next year. Um, that said, about important games, we've got the relegation running on Friday the 13th. Who will go down? On the spot now, who will go down? London, for me. Uh, I just think, I think going to Wakefield. Tough place to go. We've always had some tight encounters there uh, with them. If the fans get going, they can make make a bit of noise, and I just think they'll grow a bit out. I can't, I can't see. I know the fairy tale is, and a lot of people uh, are saying on various forums or various pages on, on Facebook, etc. They want London to stay up, and I can see why. For me personally, I've hated both games down there. Um, is that because the results are the the, the a combination of everything? Of everything driving all that way to, to get beat both times or three times if you include when we go into London not been a happy hunting ground for us this year plastic pitch not not great in terms of fan base etc Wakefield I think if we lost Ben or Hull KR from Super League that would be more detrimental to rugby for me than London staying up See I would like London to stay up uh, this is a view that I've held for a while I, to be honest I know we've got relegation in but I'd almost like Super League to expand to 14 teams. Yes. Um, and people will say, oh no, we've not got enough good players. But I think you've got to stick at it for a couple of years before we get to. And yeah. try and get more people playing, get more from the amateur game through, yeah. start getting the kids, giving them a chance, and, and raise your standards. Reserve that way. grade rugby might do that, because that's being reintroduced, isn't it, next year? Um, so that might start to increase that standard. It might be something they've got in the pipeline. Um, the RFL and Super League to try and get it back to 14 teams but I just mentioned about London going down and people say well plastic pits etc Toronto personally I don't want Toronto to come up I want Leeds to come up because if they do this loop fixture thing again next year and it's the same the team that finishes 12th the team that finishes top I've got to go got twice two, away yeah, to two, two I don't ways. want it to be Toronto even though I know they're playing a lot of games you over they might play some games I'd rather go to Leeds twice yeah so you don't think anybody else you don't think Hull KR well Hull KR are playing Salford aren't yeah, they yeah I've, I, I, I've not seen the Salford team I've got a funny feeling because I, I know Salford if they win and other results go their way can climb a bit higher and I know if they don't and, Cat, and Castleford win they can drop a place I wouldn't be surprised to see Salford resting the likes of Nile Levels or Jackson Hastings because they've got such an important yeah. game next week I haven't seen the team news I could be completely wrong they might be going full strength um, but yeah Huddersfield are obviously in that mix as well aren't they Huddersfield are playing is it Catalan uh, this weekend I'll just check them out yeah. yeah it is Huddersfield are playing Catalan at home Catalan have rested a lot you yeah, said yeah Catalan have rested a lot so you'd think Huddersfield and again Huddersfield they haven't got a great fan base have you watch the Premier League and it's full <laughs> It's, that's, it's, it's just the way the world and will fall. three men and a cowbell yeah. when we go there. <laughs> it is. That's because of, uh, oh, the, if the fans are to be believed, when we were up there a couple of years ago, a couple of their fans said that is all because uh, they went down a couple of years ago and they've never got them fans back, which is a shame, but it just shows that, you know what, that clubs have got to do more than just reduce ticket prices to get people in through the, the gates. They've got to kind of put money into the youth team yeah. to bring local players through make it more relatable stuff that we've been doing down here for years and we don't struggle for crowds they won the league leader shield didn't they about four yeah. years ago yeah they did 15, they did. 16 yeah so um, tonight because we're filming this on Thursday rather than the usual Wednesday um, the under 19s are playing in the semi-final playoff uh, playoff this could well have gone out uh, after kickoff. Um, once we've done all the uh, editing and put our makeup and all our filters on, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's that's it. It's good to see 
the, the 19s playing here and it's such a big game it just shows again that I've just said it about bringing youth players through we're in another semi-final so hope they can go all the way yeah a couple of the lads who played first team as well this this year will probably play tonight Lewis Dodd yeah. Josh Eaves uh, Lewis hasn't played first team but uh, he's, he's, he's on the fringe of it uh, Josh Eaves Jack Wellsby um, all likely to feature yeah. tonight so it's a good opportunity uh, for people to see those so yeah playoff semi-final um, another uh, important game coming up on Sunday is our ladies team uh, I went to watch them this Sunday just gone and that was against Leeds at 20 hours all fantastic game rugby league really tough uh, hard game of rugby league we scored literally last play yeah. uh, but Faye Gaskin who pinged one from the touchline sent it over to you didn't I absolutely brilliant kick pinged it from the touchline and um, she had to go off I think she had a dead leg or, oh, or an injury much. so then Chantel Crowler had the conversion to win it and she, and she dragged it wide 20 all is probably a fair result they don't yeah. have the golden point because uh, Wigan women also so yeah that's against Wigan uh, on Sunday it's a 2pm kick off following the colour run um, I think it's £3 for adults £1 for concessions free for members so get down it was a great game last time in the um, in the cup yeah. uh, where we dusted it we did yeah, it was you know. beautiful um, game that. but it's good game and, and the standards improving every time I've watched yeah. them they're getting better and better I'll tell you what you're getting good at this good nod to the colour run which happens on uh, Sunday at 9 o'clock um, that's all over our social media so check that out uh, Emily Rudge of the women's team has been nominated for Woman of Steel and as she's well. Made of Steel too. She that is, girl can she, run. Yeah. yeah. Um, up against uh, a Castleford player, can't remember her name, and a Leeds player. Um, so every chance she's had a fantastic yeah. season. She's she's absolutely solid. Gets the team going. Really breaks through gaps and, and creates that role for the likes of Faye and, and the girls behind her. Yeah to play off so yeah good luck to well, obviously we don't have a say and we can't vote for it it's going to be announced at the um, at the awards in Manchester in October is it October yeah. Grand Final? yeah it is and on, on the back of that um, next Saturday so when we've got a week off um, there's a, a function on down at the club it's £10 for adults £5 for kids uh, and it's to support our Saints Women's International players because they're amateur if they have to set time off work they don't necessarily get paid for it so it's a bit of a fundraiser for them. Uh, Emily Rudge and Jodie Cunningham are hosting a quiz down here. There's auctions, there's raffles, there's food on. Listen, just come down and help get involved there. Um, and I think that's it for this week. Is there yeah, any other little Only bit? one more piece of news, that uh, a club nearby would find £2,000 for, um, for making a, a late, unauthorised change to their 19-man squad. Club wasn't named. Can't think for me it was. Oh, and there's a new uh, HIA yeah, protocol in place. Well. Unnamed club. No, no idea who they are. Wonder if but, they're um, linked. Yeah, it must be. Anyway, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back with instant fan reaction straight after the whole game. Um, don't forget to give us a subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. And give us a like on Facebook. See you on Friday.